Proverbs 18, 22. And the word of the Lord says, He who finds a wife, finds a good thing, and obtains favor from the Lord. He who finds a wife. Number 2, 31, 10 of the book of Proverbs, very quickly. Proverbs 31 and verse 10. Very quickly. The Bible says, who can find a virtuous wife? That's a question mark. Who can find? And the Bible says, for our what is far above rubies. Tell your neighbor, our price. Our price is far above rubies. For a quick minute, I want to share with us finding your life partner. Look at your neighbor and say, finding your life partner. Shall we pray? Eternal Father, thank you because the entrance of the word gives light and understanding even unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come today to learn at your feet. I make my thumb the pen of a red writer and I write the word of life upon the spirit of man. After now, oh God, make us better people. Let us walk according to your counsel, according to your purpose. We worship and we exalt you because you are good. In Jesus' matchless and beautiful name we have prayed. Amen. Can we have believing amen as you have your seat? All right, welcome to the Energized Church. Some of us are joining us for the first time. Some of us are returning from home with students. I want to say thank you for coming. And I believe this word will bless you, transform you. Like I have maintained before now, some of these notes, you need to put them on a hard cover. Some of you don't need it now. But you'll be needing it very much later. So let's talk about finding your life partner. We've read two scriptures, very important. There will be a guide, even for what we want to talk about this evening. Marriage is a serious business. I tell your neighbor, marriage is a serious business. And you see many people looking from outside underestimate what marriage is. They look at the joy, the hugs, the kisses. And sometimes they, they underplay what marriage is. Listen to this. Marriage is a result of a decision you make. And I've always maintained that life is about making decisions. But some decisions are more telling than others. Marriage and marital decision is one of the most fundamental decisions of your life. It will tell where your life will be. Not tomorrow, but in the next 70, 80 years, if God permits. So that decision is very key. It's perhaps the biggest decision of your life after receiving salvation. So if you want to have a good home, I mean... You like a good home. You like the image of a man and a woman. It starts not when you get married and you put a ring on it. It starts when you make the decision of who to do life with. The decision of who to do life with. Permit me to say to you that it starts from when you pick a godly spouse. You cannot pick your spouse at the club and expect to have a Christ-centered home. You can't pick your spouse at the club and expect to have a Christ-centered home. I was recently talking to some folks, some ladies in particular, and I was telling them about the chain of life. Listen to this. The kind of guy, the kind of man you date, is the kind of man you will marry. The kind of man you marry is the kind of man who will be your husband. The kind of man who is your husband is the kind of, of will tell on the kind of children you will raise. And the kind of children we, you raise uh, will also determine the kind of grandchildren you will have. So it's a chain that you have the power to start. So I tell people, start carefully. If you date a wrong boy and you date him without planning to marry the guy, if you get pregnant and your parents say you are of age <laughs> and then you marry him, expect to have wrong children and wrong grandchildren. And the chain will continue that way. Do you know the average cost of a wedding in Nigeria? The average cost of a wedding in Nigeria is about 2.5 million naira. Now, do you know how many marriages, how many of those weddings end in divorce? Many. But in Nigeria, because we don't do divorce, <laughs> most things you'll find is that they just start living apart. It's called separation. Another one is to have roommates. They are not married, but they stay as flatmates. They don't talk. I, I once met a couple in church who were wearing the same clothes, and the woman came for deliverance service. And I said, you can't have deliverance. Because I've had a, a lady be prior to that time praying and saying, God, give me that kind of marriage. 
So I was saying, what are you doing here? And the woman was talking to me. She said, myself and my husband have not been talking for six months. And I said, how come you wear the same clothes on a Sunday? He said, it depends on who woke up first. So when I see that she wears this Ankara blue, I'll just go and take the Ankara again. So when you see them from the outside, it's an image of your proper house or proper home. But inside, it was not the same. So there are separations. And listen to this, in 2018, the rate of separation in Nigeria has increased by more than 14%. That's statistics. That tells you that many people love the thing of that wedding day. On your wedding day. <laughs> Let's not continue that song. Now, how many of the marriages do you know are happy? I'm asking you. How many of the marriages you know are the couples? How many of them are they happy? You see, many people are not in marriages. They are in bondage. The rings that was meant to signify unending love now represent unending captivity. Let me first start by saying God's desire is that every one of us find a helper suitable for us. That means that an helper suitable for Minister Allen is not a helper suitable for Minister Benga. Why? Because their purposes are different. And so what you will need to help him, Minister Allen, in his life pursue is not what you will need to help Minister Benga in his life pursue. So he makes an helper suitable even for every one of us. And you need to have that at the back of your mind. Now, today, I'm talking about finding your life partner. And scripture told us who is supposed to do the finding. And that's the man. The finding is not the work of a lady. The lady can locate herself and choose. Because when they bring the message of love, you are supposed to now choose whether to follow or not to follow. But who does the finding? According to the scripture we started with, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Scripture says, who will find a wife? He will find not she who finds. <laughs> she who finds an husband. He say he who finds a wife. So, you can go on Tinder. How many of you know what Tinder is? Tinder is a relationship app that people go to. If you are not too, you don't know Tinder. What do you know? What's happened to go? <laughs> so, many people go on Tinder. But you can't find on Tinder. You can only find based on what God says. He says he who finds a wife. Say he obtains favor from the Lord. And 31 tells a virtuous wife who can find. So if there is anyone who is supposed to do the finding, it's supposed to be the man. And many times our sisters and our ladies are not found because our men don't know what they are looking for. So today, I am speaking and I want to zero in on the man. Because next week will be the second half of this message. Well, we'll be talking about choosing a life partner. Choosing is for the ladies. But today we want to talk about finding. And the ladies need to listen to this. Because I'm going to state certain qualities uh, that the men should look for. So you also ask yourself and judge yourself. How many of these do you have? Praise God. So I want to say two things very quickly. I will tell you on why Christian single men cannot find their life partners. Why they can't find it. Single brothers, yeah? They are, they are up to the age. In fact, they are over age. You know, there are some jobs you apply for, they say you are overqualified. They are overqualified, but they can't still find. And then I will also tell you what qualities you should look for in a partner. But before I say that, I want to say three things very quickly. Number one, relationship is for men, not boys. Relationship is for men. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. Very quickly, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Relationship is for men. Say, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I taught as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Before you can enter relationship, uh, you should have put away childish things. Relationship are for men. Relationship is for men, not boys. And the telling difference uh, between Men and boys, uh, it's not age. It is growth and maturity. So you may be 40 and still behave like a child. I have seen fervently serious children at 40. So it's not a question of age. And I've seen sincerely matured boys at 18. They are ready. That tells you they are growing and they are matured. It's about maturity and growth. 
And quickly, I want to show you how you can know and see a difference between a man and a boy. In case you are dating somebody who is a boy, I will let you know now. So that you can know that after this meeting, you should call him and say, when you grow, come back. You are not breaking up. You are just giving allowance and room for him to go and grow. And I like people in this church. You know, I've been getting messages from guys who have been telling me, she just, I called her again and then she said, what are you looking for? What do you want from me? That means whatever they are learning, they are, they are practicing it. Let all those egot ministry boys stop. They are sniffing all around you. You need to ask them, hello, sir. What are you calling me for? This is 9 p.m. You should be sleeping. Gave you four missed calls. You should ask questions. So you want to be able to know, is this a man or a boy? The first one is that a man is a man when he has faith. Finding God or being found by God is a proof of development of your inner man. A man who does not have faith. When we talk about faith, we're not talking about faith to get. We're talking about faith to live by. A faith in God. He knows God. He has understanding of God. Bible told us in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2. Bible says, by faith, the elders obtain the promises. You see that? They are elders, not boys. They are elders. So for you to obtain, you have to grow. It's growth, maturity. That's the first one. Number two, you must have a good sense of purpose. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. Before God found an elder suitable for Eve, he first gave him a job. He gave me a garden to take care of. To take care of. So he must have a good sense of purpose. He knows and understands his work and his part in the plan of God. That's very key. Don't date someone who does not know where he's going to. <laughs> someone who does not have a plan. Before you seek for a, man, for a wife, man of God, I want to advise you, seek for your purpose first. Because you cannot even know if she's the right one, man of God, except you know where you are going. That's when you will find a helper suitable for your journey. So the first call God has called us to is a call to purpose. Number three, he must know how to take care of himself. Listen, boys can't take care of themselves and that's why they need their parents. When a man starts keep saying, I need someone to take care of me, I need someone to take care of me, that's a boy. What you are looking for is a wife, not a mother. So learn to take care of yourself. Number four, he has good communication skills. Life is about communicating. I'm not saying put your words, put your English together, but at least you should be able to say your mind. Say what you feel. Not say, I want to ask you out. And then the guy say, hey, hey, okay, let's go for a date, okay. <laughs> what is that? What is that? That's a boy. You are asking a lady out and you are looking at the TV. Is she seated before you? Arise, kill, and eat. That's the voice of elders. You look at her, I bought to I bought, and deliver your message. But she, you are just, you know I love you. <laughs> Number five, proper comportment and grooming. How do you know a man? Grooming, proper comportment. He carries himself well. He's a mature man. He's not brash. He doesn't just run roughshod over people. He knows what he wants to do. He carries himself with confidence, with vigor. He exudes confidence. When you see him, you know this is the kind of person I want to be with. <laughs> no, uh, mommy, <laughs> say we should go and price that. In. <laughs> you are, what are you afraid for? What are you afraid of? Confidence. You need to train yourself to these things. <laughs> Your lecturer is telling you stuff. You enter his office. What's the worst he can say? Get out of my office. That is how you learn in life. But some of you, your mom even follows you to do the clearance in school. I have seen someone who had a job interview and his parents took him there. That's a boy. That's a boy. Number six, he has learned the basics of etiquette. This means he must have good manners. I tell ladies to be careful of men who only respect them and does not respect any other thing. So when it is you, say, oh, you, fine. But when he sees uh, your friend, he talks anyway. Now, when you get into his house, that's what he's going to do. That's him. That's the real him. 
good manners. Just wait at the door, let the girl, let the lady pass. Do you know there's a time we used to say, ladies first. Some people came up with after men. When you say ladies first, they say after men. So learn it. Be comfortable with, and with what you have. Be thoughtful. Be modest. Have good posture. Honor your word and keep your promises. These are simple things. Many of us need to go and go, go and learn etiquette. They are introducing you for the first time to a lady and you are seated. What's wrong with you? You stand up and say, hello, nice to meet you. Are you the king of Nigeria? <laughs> Just learn simple good manners. They serve food, your wife is cooking, you have finished the food before she came. <laughs> she is your wife, not your slave. You wait. You are visiting now, you have sat down, you are just doing anything you can do. You throw your shoes anywhere. You can't keep yourself. You, can't. you are not comfortable with yourself. You are looking for somebody to take care of you. What you need is a mother or a maid, not a wife. Another thing, he has self-control. Self-control. You see, boys just go over everything they need. They want a game, they go and get it. They want to hit, they go and get it. They see another lady that's more beautiful, they go after it. No self-control is like a goat. When a goat is aroused, he's just walking around. No self-control. You must learn to put your body and your desires under. Listen to this. Real men have power under rain. Listen to this. Those who sleep around are boys. Real men wait. For it takes more strength to abstain than to be active. It takes more strength to see a female created in the image of God. There are some people when you see them, you knew God took special time dealing with them. Like my wife, you knew, you just look at her. But when I was dating her, it would have been easier to just quickly say, ah, lies. Listen to this. You think because I'm a pastor, I don't feel like it too? I'm flesh and blood. James 5 says, we are men of like passion. So when we see a beautiful girl, we see this one is fine. When I see a lady that is goodly shaped, I say, my God. But you know what? My God is where he hangs. I'm not a dog. You see, it's easier to say, my God, Carlos, shut up. And then you begin to walk after it. Now that tells you there's no power under rain. That's a boy. Self-control means it is a good gold, but it is not my gold. Because some of you have, you see, you need to understand these things. Growth and maturity. When you date someone, anytime he sees you, hey, see the clothes you wear. Close the door. Close the door. You have killed me. Close the door. Now that's a boy. You have no business being there. No business being there. And that's, that's number one. Number two thing I want to tell you is that it begins with you. Whatever you want to have. You want to have a successful home. It begins with you. Marriage starts before the wedding. <laughs> Listen. I've said it before and I'll say it today. Again. If you focus, if your focus is on the lady and not God, your marriage will not be God-centered. Listen, tell your neighbor, be the spouse you want to have. I've asked many ladies, even Aristos, what do you want? God-fearing, God-fearing, number one on the list. An Aristo lady says God-fearing is number one. Are we not in trouble? Now, first of all, you want faithfulness. You want God-fearing. You want Trust. First of all, become it. You want someone who will care, who will love you? Become it. Tell your neighbor, become it. Matthew 7, 12. Say, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Number three, say no to reckless dating. Help me look for a guy around you and say, say no to reckless dating. Now, what does that mean? It means be careful, be selective, and be intentional about who you are dating. Don't just date anybody. 
date only those who you know you can marry. My dad used to tell me, never ask a lady out if you know you cannot live with her. So that means that no matter how fine you are, I'm not moved. Why? My dad says, even if you get her pregnant, you will not regret. But when you are dating somebody, and then they now say, hey, hey, he just him, he charmed him. Have you ever seen them charm somebody who didn't walk close to it? You are the one who was close. You are raising her emotions. And the girl saw five years you are not coming and decided to go out and say, please help me. I'm getting old. So don't get close to people you know. You will never say yes to a marriage. And the responsibility here rests on the man. Bible says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And I believe that is true. So let's move on here. Let's move on here. Why can't our brothers find somebody to marry? Why can't our single men find their life partners? Why? I want to quickly answer those questions. Very quickly. Number one, they don't understand. Men, they don't understand. Guy, you don't understand <laughs> that a good wife is a gift from God. She cannot be bought, acquired, gotten. She's a gift. Proverbs 31 verse 10. The Bible made it clear. The Bible says, a virtuous woman, who can find? <laughs> a virtuous, who can find a virtuous wife? Who can? So, some of you, you are just saying, Zim, Zim, around church. Zim, everywhere. You are wasting your time. A good wife, who can find? There's a question mark there. You can't. You can't find her on Tinder. You can't pay her out. You can't take her to Cold Stone and impress her with clothes. You can't take her to Dubai and impress her. A good wife, not a good lady, a good wife. She's a gift. A gift from God. So stop looking around. If you're interested in getting a wife, then ask God. The Bible says in 18 in Proverbs, it says, He who finds a wife has found a good thing and obtained favor from God. That means God favors you. And look at you and say, take that gift, take that lady. You don't deserve her if she's a gift. You know, some guys carry themselves like they are the best thing that happens to the world. All those egoistical nonsense. With all your money, you can't find a good wife. You can't pay for her. She is a gift from God. God looks at you and is he, pleased with you and says, let me give her. Let me give him her. So he says, take, take roots, take roots, take roots. He who finds a wife, it's not about devising tactics. Or opening your eyes and say, which one is finer here? Some people look at people, she read a good course. She has a good wife. She will have plenty of money, yet she won't share one era with you. The Bible says our price is far above rubies. Only God can give you a good wife. So instead of asking and searching, why not ask God? Some people will call pastor and say, hey, why are you? <laughs> Help me look for a wife. This is the place of God in finding a wife. And that's the first thing. You need to ask God. God, I am there now. I need a wife. There is a bone of my bone. Give her to me now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I receive. I believe I receive it. Number two, they are not in motion. After now, some guys will not greet me again. If you notice any guy who used to greet me and does not greet me again, know that that's a boy. Praise God. Ladies, can I have an amen? amen. Glory to God. Listen, idleness does not please anyone, including that lady. They are not in motion. That's the reason many of our brothers cannot get married. That's why you receive a no. Be just because you have not filled God the whole of your life out does not mean you should not be doing something. You know, we say ladies should not look after wealth. I uh, don't go and look for wealth. But ladies, let me advise you. Don't, look for, don't ever date someone who does not have anything he's doing. It's a complete waste of time. The Bible says, God says, I will bless the work of your hands. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. 
1917 of the book of Psalms. He said, let his beauty be upon our hands. Establish the work of our hands. It's only 28 verse 12. Blessing the works of your hands. If you do not do anything with your hands, therefore, there is nothing God can bless. You can pray from now until next year. You must do something with your life. You may not have everything figured out, but be doing something. I am tired of our brothers in church using purpose as an excuse for laziness. Using purpose as an excuse for laziness. Say, I'm, I'm, I'm following purpose. I'm pursuing purpose. Uh, I'm trying to find God's purpose for my life. I'm, that's laziness. Complete laziness. In finding your purpose, you can do a work. Somebody say, I, I'm called to quote scriptures. I'm called to sing. And then you have one invitation in a year. And you are thinking that's what you need. And you are thinking of a wife. No, you should be looking for sense. Not a wife. Because even if they give you a million error in one ministration, what happens? Your purpose does not mean you should not work. In fact, let me tell you, your work is what you do until your purpose can pay you. I know some sisters are looking for wealth and looking for iPhones and all of that. But I'm not saying you need to be wealthy, but you need to be doing something. Learn a skill. Stop being lazy. A banana, a banana, a banana. What is the problem? Go get a job. You've been praying for one year. If God does not answer prayer, He will give you an idea. The Bible says he gives us power to make wealth. That word power there is the word idea to make wealth. Divine ability to make wealth. It's time to wake up and get into motion. It's time to start doing something. Start where you are. It doesn't have to be big, but start doing something. Don't worry. Some people will be looking for bigness. God will allow those ones to leave your side. But some people, all they need is direction. It's easier to steer a ship that is in motion than to steer a ship that is stagnant. Number three, they are too concerned. Why our brothers cannot get married? They are too concerned about the outside and the inside. Package. Some of all these things you see is fake. Completely, I tell you, completely fake. That's why their shapes changes by time if you consider them very well. That tells you that their shapes is fake. Padded everywhere. Padded faces, padded body, padded everywhere. Some men are only encumbered with winning a trophy. Have you met men like that before? So that when he walks with me and we enter, they'll say, that's his wife. That is the container, not the content. The Bible says a meek and a quiet spirit. That's inside, not the outside. Oh, beauty passes away. I've seen so fantabulously beautiful people in school. Hey, hey, I saw them later. I said, what happened to you? She thought, she thought I was thinking of her. She, I said, what happened to him? I was saying, what happened to you? And you will discover the ones you thought were not beautiful in school. Life has happened to them. They have become more radiant. They are becoming more beautiful every day. That tells you that that has an inward beauty that is now spawning on the outside one. For many men, which wife is an acquisition. It's just like another, another they buy a wristwatch, like buying a car. They want something to flaunt with. And that's why they can't. 31, 30 of the book of Proverbs. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Many of us, if God had given us a Mary, we would have let Mary. Say, How will she get pregnant? You will not understand that God was at work in her life. And she had a plan, a big purpose in God's plan. <laughs> Another number four. They want to lead but can't be led. They want to lead. Some people are so quick. They want to start their own team. So that they can say, ha, sit down there. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. But they can't be led. They are not submitted to their pastor. Not submitted to their mentor. They don't have mentors. They are not even submitted to the church. Not to talk about submitted to the Holy Spirit. 
That's why when those people say, lead them to be sad, they look at me and say, can't be this one. They can't be led. But they want to lead. If you lead, if you marry someone who cannot be led, it will lead you into disaster. Somebody said, God's daughter, God only gives his daughters to his sons. The Bible told us in Romans 8, 14, who are the sons? Those who are led. He will only give his daughters to those who are led. Those who are his sons. <laughs> oh, another one, number five. They don't know how to identify qualities in a woman. Many Christian brothers can't see real quality. I mean, everywhere I look, even in the church, I see yawos everywhere. I see white materials. <laughs> but the, the people will still come. I don't want to use names that are not good. They will sit there. There's no wife in the church. You have married all the good ones. And I'm thinking, even if I'm not married, I'm seeing people who we can marry. Why? Because we know how to look for the qualities. You don't. So you don't even know what you are looking for. Look around you. Look around you. Great materials everywhere. Yet, some of you will rather go and meet somebody outside. <laughs> I, say, I can't find a wife in my church. And you go and meet somebody who you don't even know. This person will just cack herself up because you have a date. And it's in a good, modest behavior. Does not smile too much. Never been angry. Because she's with you. She's not always like that. If you want to know her, go and ask her neighbors four years ago. They will tell you that is fire. You don't know how to identify qualities. There are still Ruth, Esther's, and Mary's amongst us. But you can't see them. You can't see them. Another reason is that they want to own the lady when they are only supposed to be custodians. Custodians. But they want to own. <laughs> Listen, God has only placed her in your life for you to nurture her. Protect, care, and love her. On his behalf. It's not like he gave you one. It's, he just gave you for a while. To nurture, care for. He wants to find her in a better condition than when she gave you. When he gave you. And that's why we see some of us smile. <laughs> I say, look at my eyes. I say, look at that. Look at that photo. Look at that picture. Look at that picture. That's the wedding day. Look at you now. Look at you now. Nurtured. Look at you now. Nurtured. Look at you. And then she said, look at you also. Look at you also. Fresher. Who said fine? <laughs> Listen, some guys are control freak. Sit here. Go there. Stop talking to that one. Leave that group. Listen. He's a wife, not a robot. If you want to marry a robot, you can go and buy one. He's a wife. Say, so if I might, you won't date that, that person, I don't like that girl you are talking to. What's your problem? You cut her off every relationship, everything. You think you own her. Men, if you have that behavior, something is wrong somewhere. Number six, they have wrong interpretation of submission. You know when we talk about this submission thing? Some guys say, don't teach them. Don't, they, they have to submit. They have, they have to submit. <laughs> don't tell them that. Ah, why would they not submit? <laughs> How many of you have driven an Uber before? I mean, you've stayed Uber, Kosin, Katu, and Uber. You have chartered a taxi before. Uber just means chattering on an app. That's all that matters. But you have taken a taxi before. Now, if you charter a taxi and then you sit inside and the guy starts driving like he's drunk, you know you'll be driving the car with the guy. Stop! And then sometimes you do break like this. You be doing like you want to press the brake because you can't trust that guy. And then he just red light guy will woo. Vacado shalado satire. You are praying. And sometimes you get down before you get to where you are supposed to get down. You have you been there before? Say, I think I will get down. But then when you enter some guys driving you, you will sleep off. If you join is long. You know what you have done? You have submitted. You are just sleeping. Why? Because you know that that guy's behavior, that guy's life, that taxi guy will take you to where you are going. Listen, when you are asking a lady to submit, it's not a function of being of submitting. It's a function of your life. 
your life is what buys submission. If you live in such a way that the girl does not have to be praying, don't get, ah, which decision is this? So it will be easier. So submission is what you gain. It is not what you ask for. I tell my wife, the day I see I'm the husband in this house, that day I've lost my authority. Oh, my family, Lord, Lord, lay. Oh, you're wasting your time. For those who don't understand you, me, Lord, give you, okay, let me untrust it. That's for it. You start saying, I am, I am the head of this house. I'm the head of this house. You are not the head. You are struggling. They are voting for you to be the head. When you are the head, you just zoom in. When you come, calmness come. They know you have come. It's a life. It's not what you ask for. It's a life you live by the decisions you make, by the way you carry yourself. You don't keep late nights. You are not drinking. With, you are not having friends with drinkers. You, you make right decisions. The lady is at rest. Say, why are you not doing this? My husband said so. And she's fine with that. See, all these messages are unnecessary if our guys will start behaving responsibly. <laughs> Listen to this, I'll tell you this also. There's another part to it. If you have a wife as brilliant and as, as brilliant as Esther, if you marry someone who is like Naomi, why would you not want to defer to her in decision making? You can't have a virtuous woman. Proverbs 31 woman, diligence, hard working. And you want to make a decision, you won't defer to her. You will. But many times the problem is with the goat you took when you are making a life partner decision. That girl you are not supposed to even relate with her. My brother used to say when I'm talking about football and say, ah, Chelsea played man you yesterday. I say, ah, my daddy used to drink Chelsea. The girl is thinking of dry gin and you are talking football. She say, ah. You know, you are not in the same class. Theater by, you are finished. <laughs> Bible says two are better than one. Another thing, number eight, is that many men want her to leave her father and mother and cling to you, but you are not willing to leave yours. Have you met guys like that? Mommy called yesterday. Mommy, 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 mommy. Mommy, 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 mommy. And you think he's too sh Have you read your Bible? Do you read your Bible? Uh, you know, many men are looking forward to having a woman leave their parents and come and join them and carry their name. Say, it's not an Adeni. <laughs> the Adenis have come. But they are not ready to leave their own mothers. Do you read your Bible? Matthew 19.5, Ephesians 5.31, Genesis 2.24, Mark 10.7. All these verses said, for this cause shall a man, yes a man, leave his father and mother <laughs> and cling to you. So it is not, it is not the other way around. It is you living and clinging to your wife. It is knowing that they have done their parts. It is now you to raise your family. You know, some people, you cook for them. Some ladies, they cook, say, go do beat mommy. Now, it do, that's a new spice. That's a new style. Begin to enjoy it. I know folks, married guys, they will now go and take vegetable. True life story. They will take vegetable in their mom's place because their mom is in the same town with them. You know what you are saying? You are saying you have a useless wife when it comes to the kitchen. You are not saying it out, but you are telling your mom. And that's why some people will lose their mother like that. Because the wife said, the one praying. So I joke. Another one is that they have false expectations. Many single brothers have totally unrealistic ideas about their partners. Totally unrealistic. A girl stainless in shape, stainless in character, stainless in body. Uh, somebody comes in, is a showstopper. Listen, somebody who can rap, who can sing. You can't take a Kim Kardashian and take a Mary. You will choose one. You will choose one. She can't be tongue speaking and still be singing Alicia Keys. You have to take one. Is it that you take an Holy Ghost girl? Or you take an Instagram babe? It's one of the two. Listen, all those guests who are completing anything only happens in Mazayo movies. I'm telling you, in real life, ah, 
in real life, real character issues you will deal with. What are you talking about? Oh, oh, oh. oh. me. You don't know me. This is the guy you love. You can't stay with me for three days. You will back out. Ultimately, by God. Oh, oh. you came from all night and you are trying to sleep. That's when I want to wake up. What are you looking for? Me? <laughs> you cook and you are shouting, good food, good food. Ah! Why, why, this food, why? Why? People have issues, real issues. I'm telling you to go ask again, you are talking. Listen, some guys have con are conditioned by their friends, conditioned by their pastor's wife. You think the, the guy will have charisma like, like, like your pastor? Or you will be like the pastor's wife? <laughs> you think your pastor's wife is like that? I pity the pity that pity you. <laughs> Listen, sometimes when I see the way a guy talks, I say, ah, look at that lady. Say, I can't marry her. She's short. Look at the short guy talking. Say, somebody is short. <laughs> I was talking to one guy one time. I said, how about that girl? He said, can't you see her leg? And his mouth odor can kill a man. <laughs> Listen to this. I will say this to us. The reason some guys will get married is because they are the ones asking people out. Listen, don't be proud, though. guys here. Don't be proud. If it was the other way around, nobody will come to you. Nobody. Nobody. Ah, if this ladies, why do you ask? These ladies, I know them personally. Ah, if you know what they want, not you at all. You think you can call scriptures and pray? You think that's what they are looking for? You stay. In, in fact, the reason they will not come is that you stay only in church. You don't have emotion. Number 10, <laughs> they are okay with sex before marriage. Some guys are. So whenever they find a woman and they are saying, I'm abstaining, see pride. They say, it's because of you. I'm, I'm doing it to help you. Useless. Listen, you are not helping anybody. You are helping yourself. If you don't believe me, go and ask David. If David had helped himself, he would not have the problem he had in his kingdom. Joseph said, I will not do these things. Look at Potiphar's wife. He said, because of my master. You guys should say, I will not do these things. Not because of your master, not because of anybody, but because one day you also have a girl. Imagine coming home and seeing your first daughter come out. Daddy! Ah! You will faint. Some of you here. Yeah. With your overly righteous, you just faint. But that's what you do to another man's daughter. And he said, I will not also do it. Why? He said, I sin against God. All sex, the reason we don't do it is because it's a sin against God. Not because you like one gay. I like you so much, I will wait for you. That's nonsense. That's madness. Listen. Very quickly, let me list the qualities guys should look for in a lady. Qualities. You will see that in these qualities, you will not find V-shape, B-shape. I saw, I saw one of the Kardashians recently. She has lost every... But nonsense, eh? she, she's become more... I say, ah! What happened? <laughs> and I imagine if somebody had married that one like that. And she's becoming shrinking. She's shrinking. <laughs> Just say, <a> Jesus. <laughs> My wife has met me. <laughs> tell your lady, well, before you even marry, tell her. Say, please. Can you remove your wig? <laughs> ah. When you see some people, they are like, ah, that will be. There's nothing on their head. <laughs> ah. So that on the wedding day, that wig, she removed that wig. You say, hey! <laughs> I tell people if you really want to marry a girl, Sincerely, you want to marry her. <laughs> Go to her house. She say him. He say, no, let me know. No, don't pay attention. Just come out the way you are. 
Just the way you are, I have come to you. Come out. I want to surprise you. No, don't do, don't even use white powder. Just come out. Because that's the way she will be. Two for seven. Oh. Mm. Do, do, do you know how many minutes it took some people to come to church? Dressing up. They are not like you. You just wore trousers. You put clothes. I am running. Some of you can't even comb your hair. Grooming. I'm tired of some guys. I don't know whether they are trying to keep a bed or whether it's confusing. The whole thing is locked up. Everything is just anyhow. They look scraggy. They are boys. They may look very old. I don't even understand why a guy who is black can be trying to turn himself to white. I don't, you see, there are things that I don't get at all. <laughs> Four things I don't understand. <laughs> Quality she should look for, number one, she must be born again. She must be born again. Listen, don't do life with somebody who is not born again. Yoruba says, Iyawota ba fi jofe. Iranyo Ah, translation, father. <laughs> Some things are just better spoken in your mother dialect. You know, when your old parents are advising you, I'm giving you proverbs. Proverbs. <laughs> Meaning that uh, the wife you, you marry through dancing, <laughs> she will also be looking like this as you walk away out of your life. She will look go. Literal translation. <laughs> marry someone who is a lover of God. Marry someone who can pray. Baba Deboye said it that time. Many of you were shouting. See, life is a battle. If you marry someone who cannot pray, you are in trouble. I am telling you, the devil is not here to joke. His time is short. So you need somebody who can pray. Not do 10 minutes and say, oh, Lord, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And she's sleeping off. When they said it, I know someone was saying, hey, is he a prayer warrior or a wife? I hear you. Be, you see all those social media nonsense people argue on. It's a waste of time. In real life, if you die, you die. It's not social media. If you die, in a, it's not a movie. If Faust dies in, another, in a movie, you see him in another movie. If you die now, that's the end. So when you made that decision to marry somebody, you are chained for life. So marry someone who is a lover of God. Number two, marry someone who is trustworthy. <laughs> uh, Proverbs 31 verse 11. If you can't trust her, don't approach her. All this incensor checking of her phones. You will have BPO. You have BPO. Appartation is coming. I'm telling you. If you can't trust her, who are you chatting? Who are you calling? That tells me you don't trust her. Ask my wife. I've never checked her phone. Never. Never. What's that message? Nothing. Never. Call a lobby. It's not better outside. I tell you, I am the best for her. Best. Pack, ask her. I'm telling you, after five years, five years in December, if you find some, I know people who, who divorced, separated on the day of the wedding. They finished wedding, they separated. On that day, one bura, one day, oh, then, on that day, so five years now is something to be happy for. Praise God. Listen. Marry someone who is prudent in financial matters. <laughs> Man of God, 5K. <laughs> you know you are on your way to better days. You are dating somebody who believes you are in better days. So this 70,000, you are taking on your way to better days. The girl wants to buy a 50,000 here. I tell you, give her that money. The next day, break up with her. Ah, I will give you so that you won't say it's because I don't have money. That's why I didn't give you. I will give you and I will break up. So you will not say, out there for me 50,000 land now. <laughs> you didn't do anything. I just know that you are not the one. Marry a saver, not a waster. Paul said in Philippians 4.12, I have learned to have Bound and to her base. All the actual beasts is what she wants to buy. All the actual beasts. Buying lace. lace. I don't know why people buy lace. I, my wife, I don't know it. I don't see any brain in buying lace. Or 50,000 era for six years. 
and the clothes is like see through. I'm seeing it. You have to even wear something on that to be able to put it on. So you know now it's see through holes everywhere, and your wife wants to do that to you. She can't manage a home if she cannot get you a food for two thousand naira. Somebody puts it on Instagram, and I believe say try and give her five hundred. I say go and cook. Let's just eat with five hundred. If your wife can't get a food out for 500 naira, something is wrong. Because she will just go and say, Sister, for 500 naira, I think we should go to Chicken Republic. We'll buy one. <laughs> Some people here, I won't mention their name. <laughs> <laughs> say Chicken Republic. Let's buy, let's buy Refuel. That's better. We'll just share it. There's no need to be wasting gas. <laughs> Number four, marry a humble person. Someone looked at me, a woman looked at me and said to me, he said, they are at, they, I, I have been praying. I said, what kind of woman are you praying that your sons you come home with? She said, I can take anything, but I don't want a proud woman. Some ladies are so proud. And that's the reason some of them are not getting married. Though. I'm telling you, you know, I'm talking to guys now. That's the reason. They say, me to you, you to me, come next week. You will hear, come next week. They say, me to you, you to And you look at them, I don't know what they are proud for. Not, I don't see anything, nothing. Nothing. Not if you are that beautiful, why are you not Miss Nigeria? I don't understand. So if she is proud, say oh, we cannot, I can't be working with you. I will not go to that tree with you. I can't, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. Aqua <laughs> day. Marry a diligent and hard-working woman. When we talk about humble, meek and quiet spirit, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. A diligent and hard-working woman. Proverbs 31, 11 to 12. The Bible says she is a home builder. Even her husband is not bothered. She is diligent in the field, wherever she is. Proverbs 31, 11 to 12. That's the kind of woman you should look for. That's the kind of person you should marry. Say the art of the husband safely trust her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. Verse 12, verse 13, go to verse 13. Look at that. She seeks wool and flax. I'm not saying you should go and marry a tailor. If God is not saying that to you, you have to understand scriptures, how it is put. That's diligence. That's an hard worker. Somebody who is doing something. How many guys here, let's do a study. How many of us guys here want to marry a full house wife. Raise your hand. A full house wife. Even the ladies are looking back. Especially in this economy. Buhari is in power. Full house wife. <laughs> we are in the season of the next level. <laughs> we live by faith. But don't kill your faith before your faith delivers. Marry someone, number six, who speaks the truth. Call a spade a spade and not an agricultural equipment. If your wife can't tell you the truth, something is wrong with you. You, you know guys like to just change the hairstyle sometimes. Just change the hairstyle. How do I look? Baby, you look fine. <laughs> Better tell the guy from now, use face cap until that thing grows up. Somebody who will tell you the way it is. Somebody who will tell you the truth. Someone will say, Sir, I don't see sense in that one. No. You know they put sense for you will sir first. Sir, I don't see sense in that one. No. As you are dating, it tells you the truth. They know me. I'm a truth monger. If you want the truth, come here. I will tell you. And the next day you will greet me. You have to. Because if I have told you the truth and I see your eyes and I say, oh, I BK, you look so fine. I'll hug you. <laughs> I know that you may be angry because you can't take it, but I will tell you the truth. I say, ah, that former here, that former here, I, I can't remember the name. See, that, see, that one fit you better. I will be going. That means what you have now. Say, okay. Date someone who can tell you the truth. Who can tell you you are lazy. You sleep too much. You go to church too much. 
you use God to lie. You are not diligent. Somebody who can tell you truth. Someone you can share an idea with and say, no, no, sir, no, sir. Something is not right somewhere. You know, sometimes when I do my macho thing, I get to my house to tell me, that thing you did, you know, our house is English. That thing you did, I, I disagree. And then I'm thinking, okay, many times, because I'm a guy, you don't understand, John? Do you understand what I'm This ministry. <laughs> but when I sleep, just be now tell me, oh, not you. that thing they told you is true. It's true. It's true. So work on it. It's true. Marry someone who can tell you the truth. Who can tell you, this salt is too much in the soup. You will kill me the way you are going. <laughs> Marry someone who supports and is interested in you. Men, I advise you, Marry someone who supports you. Somebody who is interested in building your life. You finish school, you saying, what's next now? What is next? What's your plan? He's interested. She's interested. What's, what's next? Are you planning to do a master's? What will you do doing service here? How, your place of work, what if they sack you? What is the plan? Is there any other thing? Do you want to leave the bank after a while? He's talking. Uh, do, you, do you want to start your own company? How about the idea you shared the other time? Uh, this person is just interested in you. Marry that kind of a person. Not somebody who wants to use you. Marry someone who listens and seeks to understand you. Ladies, some ladies, I'm telling you from me to you, some ladies can talk. Some ladies can talk. And because they talk, they believe we have been talking. Even though she has spoken for two hours, 59 minutes, for three hour session. And she said, we, we talk a lot. We talk a lot. Now, she does not listen to you. We talk a lot. It's, all she's supposed to say is, I talk a lot. Not, we talk a lot. So, my someone, when you share an idea, it's not saying, uh, that time I was distracted. You know, except we are like ourselves. We know those who really like us. My time is up. There's someone who has a strong sense of purpose. I think that's number nine. And then finally... There's someone who cares and genuinely loves other people. Date someone who cares and genuinely loves other people. Because he sees you. Because she sees you and says, I love you, I love you. Yet, she can't carry somebody else's daughter. She says, I don't like babies. I don't like Igbo people. I don't like Awusa people. I don't like Yoruba people. I don't like people in that church. I don't like, I don't like that your uncle. I don't like the way he looked at me. I didn't like it. That's the first person he met from your family. He didn't like him. So eventually, she's not interested in people. She's only interested in you. And when she marries you, she's going to enslave you. So marry someone who cares for others, not you alone. I believe there are men here who want to do the right thing. I believe there are men here who really desire to be God's generals in their home. That is God's will. That is God's desire. And I pray for you that God will honor your desire by giving you a virtuous woman. That God will honor your desire by leading you to the path of righteousness. I pray that God will help you to hear. He will give you eye that sees. Scripture says they see eye and the hearing the ear. The Lord made them both. I pray that your eyes will see. I pray the Lord will reveal to you the qualities you really need to live for and buy. I pray God will send across your path and across your destiny that lady that is your help, suitable for you. I pray when she comes, you will not look at the outward appearance, but you will look at the content, not the container. I pray that the Lord himself will guide you to the path everlasting. I pray that the Lord himself will establish you and establish your home. I pray that understanding will be given to you in your relationship. I pray that your relationship will work. I pray that that lady will be convinced you are the one. I pray that you will work it uh, out, even for God's good. I pray you will be a patriarch in my generation. An example of a good home. You will be a pillar in Israel. You will be a foundation in Zion. The Lord will keep you. He will protect you. And he will guide you in all truth. We worship you, O oh God. In Jesus' name. Can you